Okay, so we're going to start here, and I'm going to start asking you questions about um, yes. about your life, right? We we talked about doing that. Yes, and, exactly. Um, and because you know, there's a lot of things that um, people don't know about you, right? Um, mm -hmm. And let's begin by um, you know by introducing you know your your capabilities of what intrigued me about you, right? Today is um, the 13th of September. 2021 um, and how we met was through a colleague uh, at Harvard um, and um, and his name is Williamson right and he mentioned about you uh, about your uh, dental research um, mm -hmm. and uh, my colleague is in Brazil so so where are you based Ian? so I'm at the moment in Switzerland basically in the in the house that that my dad and his dad built for for the family that um when he moved basically to, to switzerland with my mother and then my sister and yeah usually i'm in zurich at, at eth where i completed my master's in mechanical engineering and then i continued to obtain a phd in bone tissue engineering and and i just started my postdoc basically i completed my phd this year and, and that's when we have at the moment a visiting professor from brazil and then he's a friend of your friend, and and that's how we got to know each other. All right. And so, so uh, your your homage, right? You're you're originally your your Brazilian. No, originally my I I was born in Indonesia. So my mother is from Indonesia, and then my dad he's Swiss. Yes. Okay. And then so how does moved... my Brazilian friend know a friend who knows you? How does this work? Yeah. That that's. That's the nice thing of, of studying at ETH. It brings uh -huh. basically together people from all around the world with, with different backgrounds. So, so right. the, like your your friend that is a friend of my friend. Maybe they're both dentists. So, my colleague yeah. from from Brazil, he's a dentist, right? Mm -hmm. And um, he's at the moment visiting professor at the ETH in our group. And I'm I'm discussing a lot of topics with him. And at some point he. He mentioned your name, and I thought, "Hmm, that's that's an interesting person. I would like to meet him." Right. So yes. it's the it's the science that led us together, right? Yes, it's, a, it's Harvard science, um, and you know because I would talk with um, Williamson about picanha, right, and how mm -hmm. how the meat is cut and all, that. Um, and it's one of my favorites. Um, and and I and, and I'm thinking like. How did we even meet? And, and I, we, this isn't staged or anything. This is I'm just asking questions because I think that if I asked you the questions ahead of time um, and I knew all the answers, then I, I wouldn't react the same way. I, I wanted to be <laughs> raw, right? And that's how I, I handle these interviews. Um, uh, and, and you know, so so one of the individuals um, that 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 um, that inspire um, great conversations, right? Um, a great conversation I, I probed him was that his blood was completely resistant to COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Completely resistant to COVID, all forms to date, um, and uh, and that 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 is inspiring because he's just born that way, right? It's born that way, and it was covered in BBC. And I did a whole interview about him, but um, you know what made it interesting is I wanted to know like how did you get here? Right? How were you born here? We tried. He didn't even know. It's like Superman doesn't know super about Superman's. You know why Superman? Superman that kind of thing. Where you have a super ability. Yeah. You have you have a super ability, and this ability is is um, why do you think your friends recommended that I I we meet? Why why do you think that was the case? Do you have some Im impression you left on them? Well, I think the the impression I I always leave or I try to leave is when I meet someone. Mm. I want that they remember the meeting with a smile. So mm. I, I always try to convey a lot of, let's say, happiness because I think that's that's one of the reasons why why we are in this world is to to live more or less happy, right? It's not always nice, not everything is good, but but most of the time it's 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 more joyful to to get up and and waiting for a good day to happen. So and then I always, I mean, when I meet people. I think I always leave, I leave, I try to leave some of my energy with them. Mm. So, so I try to be enthusiastic. And I also sometimes got negative feedback on that in another outside of the university. But um, I think that's somehow how I leave an 
maybe a memorable impression on people that they I, I leave some part of the energy with them when when we when we end the meeting. How old are you now? At the moment, uh, we are 31. I'm turning 32 in December. Okay. So you lived a, almost a third, if, if we assume 100 or a 99, yes. you, know, you lived a third of your life. And you have this conclusion about leaving impressions and your energy, your positivity on others, and you're smiling, you know. <laughs> you know so yeah. that, that, that's, that's good. I mean, it's, um, uh, but you, you have studied a lot of science, right? You know, from grade school to middle school to you know, and, and upwards, you, you learned everything, and then you kept going, mm -hmm. right, for a period of time. Um, wh why did you do this? You well, like I scientists? Did I, I <laughs> did certainly not do it because people told me I should do it, or because they told me I could do it. So, I mean, if we go a bit back, let's say the first decision, if I should go towards higher education was in grammar school. So we have, in, in Switzerland, you have six years of, of normal grammar school after kindergarten and then you can make the decision if you go into let's say long-term high, high school where you have six years of high school or if you go first to to a second wait six school. years of high school six years yes so we in have the united states it's four years <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. that's the difference right. so in switzerland you can go either right after grammar school to high school for six yeah. years or you go first to a secondary school so you complete the nine years of compulsory school and then you enter a four-year high school. Okay. So there are these, these different ways. And then, and then you, but you have the option. So then at, after six years of grammar school, you the teacher has a meeting with the, with the parents and then they decide if you take the, the exams, basically. You have to take entrance examinations. To standardize and, and see what happens, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's and so I'm going to ask you, so you went the, you did, you went the, you went the, the six-year high school track, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so the six year high school track and then you took the standardized test. You all have to take the standardized test. So how did you do on the standardized test? So that's so basically the way it works. It, so each canton, next canton will um, organize. They make one test for the whole canton and then all the kids or pupils that want to enter high school take this test. And right. what you have is you have access to the old tests and either you get you get a teacher who says like, yeah, I will help you to pass it. You can go to classes with tutors and they help you to, to solve these problems. And then my teacher told my dad, he thinks I should not go to high school. I'm a lazy guy. I should just go the, the normal route and then go to, to the secondary class. Um, mm. Because we had these weekly assignments and when, I'm, when I was done, I spent the rest of the week playing. So he thought I was lazy. And then he just told, told me, yeah, these are all the old exams of the last four years. And then basically, good luck. And, and then I basically got just this pile of old exams. And then I just practiced on them myself, right? And, and, then, and then how did you do? Well, so you, you don't know how you pass. You will either pass or, or fail. But um, oh, they just, don't tell you what, how you do. No, they, they oh. don't tell you. They just, okay. You just enter basically as a white paper high school. Oh, um, yeah. okay. And then, so if you fail, um, then certain doors are closed. And if you pass, uh, the doors remain open. It's not, I, I like to say it, that it's not more doors open because during that time in your life, you, doors are not open. They just, um, you just have them not being closed. So, sorry. So the doors remained open, right? Because you passed. Yes. And then you went to university, right? Yeah. Then you do the high school. And the six years, right? And then you just have to pass to the high school, right. and then you get again the, the tests also after the high school. So you have you to get tests to enter high school, and right. then you do tests to get so to pre high school tests and then post high school tests. Do yes. you get do you get to know how you did on the post high school test? Oh yeah, po so post high school test, I was basically in maths. I was I was excellent. I think I got the highest grade on the exam because my grade from the year went up. So I, I could do the math, so I, I scored the full points. And then on the rest, but in, in general, if you would compare to all the other students, I, I was average. I didn't okay. mind being, being average at that point. So you my, average average on post high school tests, except math, you were outstanding, right? Yes, yeah, so okay. right. yeah. Okay. yeah, okay. And then, and then, and then what happens? Well, then you, then you go to, to ETH, 
And then the first AETH, it's, it's fun. You so the, I still remember the very first class because it was similar to the army. So when you do the army in Switzerland, oh, this is interesting. ETH is similar to the army. That's a, well, you know where they the make very, they make scientists, right? <laughs> the, the very right. the very first yeah. day because wow. in the army, the very first day, they were like every third of you has to continue and has to spend more time than compulsory. Right. And in ETH, it was every third of you will fail the first right. year. And then right. you look to the left and to the right, and you think like, it's it's not going to be me, guys. And then, yeah, so it's it's quite, they, yeah, they, it's, it's competitive. It has advantages and disadvantages. So what you what happens is you will find your friends, your small circle for the first year with whom you will study and spend a lot of time but you don't go and network a lot beyond that because I thought, well, I don't know if they will pass, you know, and then you won't see them anymore. And that's somehow, I think a mistake that you don't try in the first year when everyone is still new, 500 people, to get to know as many people as possible, actually. You think like, yeah, not let's not lose time on getting to know people because maybe we won't see them anymore in one year or two years oh well, that's kind of morbid um very interesting so about a third of you will be gone you believe in the statistic um you, you know you yeah. stay focused you don't try to because we don't know if you'll we'll be around forget about skip the heartbreaking moment let's just turn off our emotions right and let's just yeah. keep going right so so the, after the first uh year how did you do so in the first year, I was again average at ETH, which, okay. which, in but that's some better terms, than failing, right? That's better than failing. You were yeah, failing. Much, much better than failing because, okay. yeah. yeah. If, right. Yeah. But in some yeah. classes, I was very good. So then after the first year and third year, I, I was then tutor. I was teaching assistant for the classes. Oh, well, we went too fast. We, you know, we, we'll, be, we'll be done yeah. in like five minutes. So we need to go, we need to go into <laughs> when you were in high yeah. school. Um, to get to that math level, right? Were you born this way? Did you practice? Um, did you have some experience? Um, and then did you need the math again when you were in ETH? Like what happened? Like, how do you get there? Like, how did you get outstanding in the math? Um, I think it's, um, it's part of enjoying solving riddles. And then mm -hmm. part of that I also always explore now when I do sports or activities to to figure out where are my limits so i was limits okay so we're going to we're going to, i'm going to ask you when you say you are um you are outstanding in math right is that um you know <laughs> is that algebra is that trigonometry um is it calculus you know is it all of them and did you need calculus when you were first year in eth so yeah for i mean first year in eth um, we i i was lucky we had a good teacher in high school so he taught us a lot of calculus so when i entered eth i already had um imaginary numbers i had differential equations and we we realized that we were further ahead with, with the theory than than many other than many others computer. wow yes so th we're talking about switzerland right you know yes and while yes. switzerland isn't like the united states or things but they're they're very competitive right and eth is a very competitive place so so your teacher in high school changed the outcome of what it is. And then you, you were mentioning imaginary numbers. It is imaginary numbers that uh, allows you to, um, you know, to leave people with a smile because you know, there's something imaginary, right? There's something that you cannot see. When you try to graph um, a quadratic equation and it doesn't cross the roots on the x-axis, well, there's, those are roots are imaginary, and it's there, but you cannot see it. So on the graph, right? So, so you already right. knew that there was something like a hidden relationship, right? Uh, uh, that that someone cannot see, and and then you learn these tools, and you went on. Okay, and you went on. So now you're in your second year, let's say, in, in college. How were you? How did you do? And what were you taking? So in in the in the third year in college. Third year. Okay. Right. Uh, third third year. So okay. um. So in the in the third year, what was interesting is I I did not get better. So when, when we look at my bachelor, I was I was best in in the first year, and then in the third year where we could go towards um, more specialized courses, I actually did not get better 
contrary to my friend who got better in the in the more let's say um, elective courses where he could specialize in, in a field and i i went even a bit further down with, with my grades unless my bachelor thesis where i where i also had the best the best grade basically of my bachelor studies and oh. so you're in a thesis level you were you yeah. were the best and then and then everything else you were average but you you, you did you weren't one the third that got eliminated right you weren't the third yeah. that failed. And when I say eliminate, you said they don't eliminate, they just fail and then you, you just take longer to complete, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't have to repeat any. I was I, basically, I got I got lucky I did not have to repeat any of the compulsory exams. I got right. through all on the first go and that even less than one third managed, right? One third, they drop out completely. And then I, I don't know how many pass in one go in three years, but that's, um, yeah, I think it's less than 50%, I guess. Right. Yeah. But that was, you know, easily over 10 years ago, right? All this stuff we're talking about. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah a lot. Easily over 10 years ago. And then what happens to a ETH person after your fourth year? It's four years, right? So is it four years of college, university? It's it's, it's three years of, of bachelor. You do three years and then you obtain a bachelor degree. And then oh, it's in three years. Wow. So yes. everything, the numbers are off. It's four years of high school here, six years of high school there potentially, and then and then in college, you, you know, university, you guys reduce down to three years, and then and then we could take four. I took five, so um, so I took five years. I lost all kinds of time, but my five years was um, was four years of university, but inside you spent a year um, at I spent it at Pfizer. Um, and before Pfizer, some you yeah. know, some internships with companies like NASA and General Electric. So I did those, right? And you end up yeah. meeting a lot of scientists, a lot of integration outside of your university, right? And and that was the um, I think for me that sparking moment of what do you do um, when it's no longer linear, right? When it's yes. no longer yeah. linear. Uh, what should you do with your life? And the answer is anything you'd like, right? So, but exactly. uh, or right. So, so, so your life um, goes um, in, in Switzerland is three years, and then what did you do after your third year? So you sh and what you can do is, I mean, in Switzerland from ETH you usually finish with a master's degree. That takes five and a that it's I um, mean it's six semesters of bachelor's and three semester of of a master's. So it's also four and a half, five years. Okay, they, but you end up with a master's. Okay, so in the United yeah. States, this, this is very interesting. Um, I ended up doing my master's, but while I was Merck. So so after Pfizer, I went to you know formally work. And after a, a year, you can apply back then. Now, now the rules may have changed. But back then, you could apply to be to have your master's paid for by the company. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And so, so, so they, they, there's more filters, in other words. And so, yeah. when you filter up, you can do that. And, and I, I focused on an undergrad of chemistry, followed by a lot of corporate uh, um, performance, followed by uh, a master's in yeah. or, organic chemistry synthesis. Um, but only see the problem is you find out that eventually, uh, the molecular biologist by tweaking some gene will make whatever you've invented irrelevant. So I then went after um, after master's into um, an MD PhD medicine. Um, yeah. So now what, what happens is yeah. you after your master so your master's is what? What is your bachelor's in math? What is that? So so after my bachelor's so before I started my master's I, I mean I did something similar like you. So I, I think because I didn't have to repeat any coursework. So I finished after three years my bachelor's. And then I was like, yeah, well, so what? You know, I was like, yeah, so this, this was it. So I had the feeling I just somehow lost three years of my life mm. by just studying for exams. I didn't even know what to do now with this knowledge, right? <laughs> so I thought, right. like, I thought okay, uh, now, now I want to do an internship. And then after right. the internship, I want to go and travel. I want to see some, some I want to see the world. Mm. Because my dad, he always told me the stories that he went traveling in this country, in this country, and he showed me his passport filled with stamps. And I thought, I haven't done anything yet. I've just, mm. I've just studied. Who is so, this? Who is this that showed you the passport? That was my dad. My, your my father. Dad. Okay, your, yeah, your he, father. He like, your father traveled, but he was not like uh, he was not. He, did he go to ETH? No, no. He he was. I mean, he was he. 
he he learned his origin first education was um how do you call it building brick walls you know house building and then he did a lot of continuing education but mm -hmm. yes so I, I ended up doing an internship in a in a company which um, I was interested because of my technical background so I liked I enjoyed thermodynamics how to convert um, basically heat into energy something that could be used so so I did it in a in a, in a company that they did um, energy from waste so they they built um, municipal um, um, incinerators basically so from in Switzerland a lot of household waste is burned and then you make electricity with it and then I liked that concept and then I went there for six months and it was terribly boring it because so I applied it was an initiative application they did not have a project or a job I just sent my CV and said I'm interested in this this topic and then someone liked basically the the idea and they had some work but not enough people and then they thought okay why not hire me and then I did learn a lot. I, I, but I did you use did you use um, um, Q equals MC delta T? Did you use um, the delta H minus T delta S? Uh, uh, you know, did, did you use those types of things for your? No, no. I did. I did. I did not use any any of that. So I I, <laughs> I did I did some programming. I checked some calculus because they had some. I mean, they had some plans that they would check and they would have some calculations to see if if, um, if everything is within the, basically, um, the settings where they offer um, service to- Were these the double customers. derivatives and integrals? Were they like no, that? No, much simpler than that. Much simpler, I, but, right? Okay, all right, yes, very good. Yes, yeah. but what I, what I learned is that many of the, this company went through a lot of change within a short time. So during my stay, the CEO got, got kicked out basically and, and many of the people were complaining about communication mm. and about they heard on the way to the bathroom that this team and this team so so i, I what i learned is that a lot of issues they had was not the technical things but actually the communications among teams and with the customers and then and that many of the engineers they didn't seem so so confident and then when i finished i was like I will, I will never go to industry. I was like, no, no, this is, I, I won't end These up. These are strange yet. people. They, they, you didn't use maybe one tenth of what you learned in all your years, yes. right? Not even one tenth, right? So yeah. you said like, what, what's, what, what that, now you really wasted your life, right? So you have to find, yeah. right? So there's two people is that, all right, you know, I, um, uh, that school is separate from, from, from what it is or, um, or you go and explore and say, maybe, maybe I can do better. Maybe I can continue to be in school. And this is how people who are professional schoolers, right, end up, uh, end up being created in life, right? So, so I want to ask you, you went back to do your master's now. No. So I still haven't seen the world, right? I didn't ah, want to go back. You actually to... go and do that passport stamping thing? All right. Okay. All right. Go <laughs> ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, so the last thing in Switzerland, I... I was even lucky, you know, they, they, my friends, they were at big corporates in research. They did more cool projects, but I earned a lot of money. So, so I basically, I, they paid me like I, I was working for them. So, so I had then a lot of savings and, and then I basically wanted to learn Spanish. So I went then to Ecuador and then I had 11 weeks and three weeks or four weeks I spent in a Spanish school. I took intensive courses, five hours a day. Because I told myself, if I go and travel then in South America, I want to talk to the people. I don't want to be the, the visitor or the, the tourist that doesn't speak a word of well, Spanish. Well, you learn calculus, so that's a language too. You know? So it's like, yes. uh, you might as well, what's Spanish, right? When you learn calculus. So yeah. you learned Spanish, right? And so you can go and hablo your Espanol, right? So, okay, so now you're there, right? Um, and then uh, uh, what, 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 what happens there? Well, so then... I, I really enjoyed it a lot. And so I went then also to Indonesia, where I was born for traveling the first time without my parents also for 11 weeks. I met there also, also a friend. Now the Spanish doesn't work in Indonesia. No, the Indonesia, the Bahasa right. Indonesia. Yeah, so did and you I, already know Indonesian? Yeah, my mother taught me Bahasa Indonesia. Oh, okay. Yes. And you, you knew how to speak it, right? Okay. Yes. So, yeah. so you went to South America, and then you also went to Indonesia. 
Where else did you go and how long did you stay? So in Indonesia, I spent a few weeks with cousins. Then I had one cousin in, in the Philippines, in Manila, who I've never met. And oh, then the I Spanish said, works there. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it also okay. works there. But I didn't okay. use it there. They, they spoke Tagalog where I was. Ah, then and you know they, how to speak Tagalog? No, I didn't pick up oh. any Tagalog. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> yes, okay. but I, what uh. was fun, so like in the middle between my, my travels, I met also a, a friend from Switzerland and we were on a, then we did a trip for one week and he made many friends. They all had a PhD, like they had a PhD from MIT or from Harvard they from, or from Singapore and they studied abroad. And then they told me about, about uh, their, their science they did and their work. And I was at this point, I came to the conclusion that well, working for industry is not what I want. And the last classes I took at ETH, they did not really interest me so much. That's why I did not really excel. So I thought maybe I met one a guy, he's basically professional adventurer, one could say. So he basically earns money, then he goes on adventures. Mm -hmm. And then I thought like, that seemed interesting. And I thought like, I will just earn some money in Switzerland and then I go on adventures. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, I, what I realized that at some point was that it's getting boring with time. So mm. this distance and traveling, you meet new people, you tell the same story over and over. Yes, I'm John from Switzerland. I've been there, I've done that. Yes, I did a bachelor in mechanical engineering. And then when I met basically these guys um, on this boat and they all, I mean, one did neuroscience and I think one was also an engineer. And then I, was, I got somewhat curious into, yeah, I, I, then I got basically really motivated to go back to ETH, to to basically go back to classes and, and study. I was really looking forward, basically, to use my brain again. Yes. Mm. You know the uh, yeah even even John right? It's spelled G I A N John right? Yes, John. Yeah. 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 So um, most people won't understand that. <laughs> so they look at that and they you know. So I had to. Uh, tweak a little bit, right? Because you're my first John that I've met with a GIA, and I'm sure over in Switzerland there's many of you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, John's very common in you know, a, a lot of places, and uh, but not that spelling. That's very interesting. Um, so you you realize that if you kept going, that you might have a very different outcome based on the others that you met in your travels. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that led you to explore returning and continuing, even though the ending was not good, right? The ending was bleh, you know, meh, right? Yes, it, was, it wasn't fully, you know, it wasn't inspirational after ETH, but you went back because you went out and saw what's out there. They didn't use any calculus to solve the equation, and you have all this stuff stuck in your head. Um, you, you know. Um, you know, sine of 30 degrees is uh, 0 0.5. Sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. 0 0.866, right? 86.6% if the hypotenuse was 1. What should you know about that? That doesn't even need it, right? So then why is it stuck in my head, right? So I ran into that too, right? Right, that, I ran into that too. If chlorine is number 17 on the periodic table, um, then bromine is 35, right? You know, so so then then, then like... And, and fluorine is nine because nine plus eight is 17. And so I, I know things like that, but what am I going to do with that? Right? Crazy. So I'll just recite a couple. I'm sure if we had this re recitation, right, you could recite things. Uh, and, and, and we would say, oh, yeah, yeah. The, um, the constant is if you ever saw 4.18, right, you say, oh, yeah, grams per joules, you know, per centigrade, right? You would say, oh, yeah, I recommend or rec recognize that's a specific gravity of water. You know, why do we have these if we're going to okay. stop, right? So you continue, all right, like I continued. And, yes. and, and when you continue, that is when, that is when it begins. That is the tip of the iceberg that you begin and say, why didn't they teach us that earlier? Why, didn't, why don't they even tell us? Do you know by the time you're 50 or even in your 40s, your eyes will be, you'll start having like, um, you won't be able to read very well, right? Um, <laughs> and then why don't they stress that? I mean, we kind of know, but they don't stress that. And, and then in medical school, they never told me that they were going to teach me about the teeth. I know very little about the teeth, right? I mean, the other thing about the teeth is because uh, friends like you and others that tell me about that. So, 
there's so much that we don't know that you could have at least shared a little bit with me. Even if they shared with you, you know, all this calculus I'm teaching you in high school, um, that um, these fundamental theorems, uh, you won't be using it if you went out and got a job. And in 99% of cases, or 99.999%, um, it goes more dot .999s if the sample size is bigger because we have to accommodate. But if the sample size is smaller, we could just say 99%. So, so the, 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 the whole thing is it would not, you won't be using this. But why didn't they tell you? Because either one, they might scare you off, um, or they don't know themselves, right? They don't yeah. know themselves, right? Oh, Maybe they don't know, right? We yeah. actually asked in high school, you know, when our teacher taught us eigenvalues ah. and eigenvectors. Yes. And then we asked him, like, why do we need this, you know? And wait, wait, English stop, stop. Number. Did you not take physics when you were in high school? Yeah, we, we took physics, but there... They didn't, didn't call it Eigen, right? They didn't call it Eigen. They did, no, they didn't call it even... I think I don't remember we covered it in physics. I think in physics we didn't go so much into combining the math and, and the physics. It's just more this is the physics, these are the equations. And right. even though I, I took the specialization, but yeah, they did and then you know what I what I liked about mechanical engineering, then then you come across basically eigenvectors and then eigenvalues where you can calculate basically the the maximum stress in a direction. And then you just know you just Young's take modulus stress. and stress strain, right? And yes. all that. Yes. All, all, that, right. all the things. And and that's what I I enjoyed. And what I also then enjoyed in, in my masters is so the masters didn't get easier when, when I returned. No. no. <laughs> right. No. Right. But it, it got it got more More interesting. Well it got it got more interesting or it, and then also easier in in the same way. Because at some point the the things they connect. Well, it becomes more purposeful, right? yes, because yeah. at least you, you're like, now I'm not, I'm done stuffing and I can start using something and finding the connections. All right. So you, you that, that's the masters. Okay. So now what is the different, why did you then go from the masters to your PhD? Yeah. So that, that was also coincidence or lucky, I would say. So I had, um, I had one friend with whom, I mean, we lived together and in a shared flat with his other friends too, and he studied also with me mechanical engineering. So we started together bachelors, but he had to repeat in one semester. So then I went traveling and he continued. And so in the masters, he actually was then advanced more further than me because he didn't go and, and took a one year break. And then, then I asked him about, so do you have any courses that you recommend that you really thought they were really cool? You learn a lot of things. Mm. And then he said, like, yeah, there is this one course that is called Micro and Nanoparticle Technology from, from Professor um, Brazzinis. And he said, it's, it's really tough. It's super demanding. They, they won't treat you nice. They do <laughs> a lot. Right. But he enjoyed it because right. he, he thought it was rewarding. And then I thought, like, okay, I'm taking this course too. And then, you know, all the other people said, like, oh, I know this course. And you do also a semester project next to it. But that's really a lot. This course is more than a semester project, and then I, I still I, I still book it then, and then and then I really um, yeah but I like basically the the culture of this lab, how they would teach, how they would treat um, students, and then they would basically, I mean a bachelor thesis student or someone like me who was just doing classwork in a small mini project, they would treat me like a full employee. You know, like if I present. I, I, I must deliver something and they because everyone is listening, everyone is taking their time to listen to me. So I really should know what, what I what I say and I should know what I've done in the lab. And then, and if I say something, I should be convinced of my own work and um, re forgetting something is fine. But it, no, not knowing what, I, what I've done, that that's really not good because that I should know. And that, that I, I really like that kind of attitude. That's so really not I, good. Yeah, if you did a bunch of work and you don't know what you did, that's yeah. really not good. Of course, it's not good. Why would you? Why don't you start looking at it that way when you're in high school, right? But they, the people, see. It's very interesting this dynamic. If you succeed in the science, you you shouldn't be a teacher in high school. That's very strange. That's what they told me. Like you know. So um. So that. But then, as a consequence, nobody in high school, who <laughs> teaches high school, knows anything about this. This this um, accountability to your research and your laboratory and where you ended up 
was very interesting because that is Alice in Wonderland. You went into the nanoparticles where um, if, you, if you get things small enough, then the hole is small enough, then the pressure you know, over the area changes completely. And now you know, what you were studying about flow uh, you know, is different, right? Because we, are, you learn, you, we learn a lot about macro particles and now you learn about nano and they function differently. Um, and where we connect on a totally different level, even in our other discussions we don't talk about is what well, for me was graphene, right? It was a, a nanoparticle that works. That 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 it, that it attracts funding as opposed to a nanoparticle that doesn't attract funding. Because there's plenty of nanoparticles that didn't attract yeah. the attention and media and and, and investments. Uh, and we'll get to that. But but see, these are all unfortunately compartmentalized. High school is compartmentalized in college, and college is compartmentalized to masters and and masters. Is really not a PhD. So now, now you're in the PhD. You, you now, are you in the PhD program? Are you? Do you go in? Then I, yeah. So this was very, you could say it was almost a start because you, if you want to get into PhD, you need to convince a professor, right? Right. To hire you, you basically to take you under their wing as the apprentice, yes. right? So then yeah. I basically I decided to do my master's thesis. It's a six months full time project, also with that lab, mm. and then and there, what I I, I mean, then I start. I was thinking, okay, I, I consider doing a PhD, but I'm not sure. So, and what was important to me is I wanted to start a project in the PhD that was my project that I initiated. I didn't want to go into, you know, what, what I didn't like about the mechanical engineering education, um, not not the education, but the Basically, I mean, to me, the culture, the, cu the culture, maybe, it, right? It's optimizing, you know, you have something that is working and you make it better if you go to industry, right? They if call it incremental changes. So you're not yes. so interested in incremental change. You wanted to make fantastical changes. Things yeah, that are, yeah. right? Opportunity jumps, right? You don't want, you want to inflect, you don't want to just like uh, 5%, 10%. You wanted thousands of, uh, you know, you basically wanted a paradigm shift. Type of yeah, type of thing. Yeah. Okay, nanoparticles will get you there closer, right? Okay. So, do you stay in that lab for your PhD? I started my PhD in that lab because oh, then I, okay. I, con right. I convinced my professor that, that I'm good, that I, I deliver work. I was very happy with the outcome of my master thesis, and then I thought, like, yeah, I, I, I start here because I could start a project. You know, they so my master thesis started to be like I went to my supervisor and said I. I want to do a project and on my own. I, I want to initiate it. And then he said, like, yeah, look, we have here a vial of, of it's barium titanate, it's piezoelectric. So it has, when you apply stress to it, mechanical stress, it generates electrical charges. Um, we can produce it, we can produce it in a scalable fashion. Um, we don't have an application. And where we keep basically, where we um, make use of its nano size. And then I was like, okay, I like it. So then I went to, to literature, you know, and then I spent like one and a half weeks. I was just screening through all the papers. And then I went back to him and I said like, yeah, you know, bone tissue engineering, you know, apparently bones, you can stimulate them with electrical charges. There are some papers I found an early paper from 1997 where in China, where they implant into the human eye to a not a human in a, in a jaw of a dog, a, a ceramic of bottom titanate, and they showed that they had basically directional mineralization so that the bone grew, grew better on, on, on the negative charged side. Oh, and okay. Then, so the anode, right? The anode yeah. stimulates um, um, the osteoclastic, uh, uh, reduces the osteoclastic, stimulates the osteoblastic activity. Is that what it yes, is? Yeah. Okay. All right, so as you see, like this is how I can say that, right? Because I went through medicine, and so I know the osteoblast, the osteoclast, and I'm thinking, like, <laughs> holy smokes! But you know, I would not have known that, right? This is this is actually this has not been. We both are witnesses to this. This has not yeah. been pre-prepped or anything, right? You either know the language or you don't, and this is I not Spanish or calculus, right? I didn't know. Right. So you present this to your professor who you're doing your PhD and what was his response? Because this is not the well, same. No. Yeah. So, so I, it was not to the professor, it was to the, to the um, senior scientist, right? 
And then he, he said like, yeah, maybe not. What? 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 <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And then, I said like, and then I said like, yeah, okay, I had another project. So I had another project which was on energy harvesting, doing nano generators. And what I found there was, was, I think it was even crazier. So doing nano generators basically for implants, for example, to drive pacemaker, because you know, pacemaker, you need yeah, to replace the heart battery. You need to, yeah, okay. And then, then he thought like, and then I showed, you know, the results that they would show for each paper, how they would demonstrate the, the science. And, and then he said like, yeah, do this energy harvesting. This, this looks interesting and, and good. And, and the thing is, you know, he, he basically did not want to kill one idea or the other, but he had our professor in mind and to which, you know, which kind of results or graphs, why experts, it's easier for me to convince my professor of the science. And then there he saw similarities to other research that was going on with, with um, gas sensors, semiconducting for, for breath analysis, you know, where you see a peak. When you have uh, the analyte goes through the sensor, then you see a conductivity peak. And with this energy harvesting, if you apply stress, you will see this voltage peak that I could show. And then I said, fine, you know, I do this. And then I, you know, I, I, I saw, you know, I, I read the literature, I, I came up with experiments to reproduce papers and I reproduced some of the papers, showed the same data. I, I built on top of that, showed that the material that we could do in, in this gas phase, we have a special synthesis method that we do. It's called flame mate, barium titanate, the, the publication in the end. And then, and then I, I mean, I basically sold this to my professor, got my master's degree, but then I was like, I still want to go back to the bones, you know, because that's the original well, idea. Well, look, if you did that, right, and you stayed with that, we wouldn't have the interview. What interest intrigued me, right, was that you have in the you have found and discovered a compound, um, and in the presentation you sent me, it just says compound X, right? So this compound. Yeah can 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 lead to bone growth and and because you're in teeth right a lot of times well, as we get older we do things to our teeth uh, we don't just chew on them we apply stress strain mm -hmm. we shear we have um, TMJ uh, we grind our teeth when we're sleeping all kinds of things that would not be good, and um, and 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 uh, if you could grow the teeth, then because if you have your people chip their front teeth, right? If you chip your front teeth, you can't just put composite there, um, you know, and it just holds, right? It's basically dysfunctional. But if you could find a way to grow them, right? That's a breakthrough, and that's what intrigued me um, about. We're at nine forty-five right now, fifteen minutes ago. That is what intrigued me about your discovery. But now I'm going to ask you, your professor wanted you to do the other one, right? It almost destroyed, like destroyed this whole interview because I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been, I, I would not have jumped on this. So, all right. So now, 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 how did you, you, do you kept going on your own? Is that what happened? Yeah. So, I mean, I but he's your sponsor. He's your sponsor. So what do you do? He's, he's, right? my, he's my sponsor, but right. I mean, what he also said is, you know, already my master's thesis, he told me, well, John, if you're serious with this energy harvesting and pacemaker, you should go and talk to a doctor, you know? So what I did is I contacted the director of cardiac surgery at the university hospital, and he took time to meet me. And then in the, when I started my PhD, I was like, I cannot do this alone, you know? So you go to ETH, and then you Google bone ETH. And then there is this professor, his, his name is Professor Ralph Müller, and who showed them up with his group, um, Laboratory of Bone Biomechanics, and then I go and, and check their site. And what I did then is I went to the people's site, you know, and I checked, do I know some, someone of the people that work there? And then I, I saw one guy, um, we were both teaching assistants for mechanics at the same time, when I was in bachelor's and he was in master's. Mm. And then I wrote an email basically with 150, I think, words pitch, said, yeah, I'm doing, you know, this kind of research, it's electricity, bone, I would like to collaborate. Um, please, you know, just um, distribute the email in your group. And then I got a phone call of a postdoc who just started. And, um, and then I met with her and then, and it was basically, 
yeah, then a lot of time passed. Then I did some experiments, I did bachelor thesis, and then I was four years into the PhD. Um, then my funding was over. I had funding from another PhD who, who decided to stop after one year. And mm. then my professor said, John, you know, we need to talk. Mm. And that's the meeting. He was like, yeah, you know, if you continue with me, until you have six years time until 2021 November, you will not obtain a PhD, he told me. And then he, he asked me, do I know why? And you know, I, I knew his kind of style until then. And I told him, yeah, yeah, I know why, you know, you cannot predict the future, but you extrapolate the past. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because his, his requirement was four published papers as for author. And then I knew with this topic, with this research I'm doing, I'm not able to do this. And what I liked, he told me, I will not be able to obtain a PhD with focus on nanoparticles. And I told, and I told him, yeah, but that's not what I want, you know? I'm working here on the bone tissue engineering and on the bones. And, and then he asked me, so what do you want to do afterwards? And then I said, well, I continue as a postdoc. I believe, I believe in this project, you know? I believe that I can basically make bone grow faster with this kind of material. And then he said, like, yeah, but, you know, many people believe in their work. He would always go and challenge, you know, basically your, your beliefs, you know? <laughs> right, so yeah. This meeting. And he said, yeah, but, you know, do you think believing is enough? And I told him, you know, if I don't believe in it, I'm not able to convince anyone that I can do this. So I must believe in it. And then he said, mm. like, fine, you need to talk to Professor Miller and you need to move, you need to switch. And I said, like, and, you know, it's not the first time he tried to help me going to the other group. He already tried after the first year, the second year where I um, showed him all my plans I had. And he said, like, I'm not able to help you. And then I said, but then I realized that yeah, he's right, you know. Now it's time to switch. So because I Because you I, started realizing he's saying I can't help you. Uh, it was yes. actually out of selflessness, right? And then yes, it, it exactly. was really for you to then explore. But then when you're younger, you're thinking like, Oh, I, I tried so hard to get in your group. I, all the time I spent on my masters and these types of yes. things, we worked so well together. Um, but because you realize something is that believing is more than enough, right? More than enough when you're with the right people, with the right right systems. Yes. If you're the ugly duckling and you believe that you're beautiful, well, go show me the other ugly ducklings in your community, right? You have to go to the location where you're going to meet the Tiger Woods um, who show exactly. you golf as opposed to learning the golf from your book, right? You have to go and change your ecosystem. But now you have your belief to drive you, right? So you're driving your belief, you go into and now you've discovered, I, that's what intrigues me, right? Because it is, it is finding that essence, tuning that essence and maintaining that flame so that the student can keep going. Now, after you get to there, right? You get there and you learn about this material. We have 10 minutes left. Now we're gonna condense, right? Um, what happens with the, um, with your, um, what year was this when you switched to the other lab? What year was this? So that, so that was 2019, I think, yes. So it was, this was the fourth year. Two years ago, two years ago. Years. One year before COVID would rip the country, you know, the world, you know, everything apart right? yeah. and change everything. All right. And everything before that was just fine. Uh, I'm going to fire a bunch of questions. What toothpaste do you use? Uh, well, I, I used a lot of Elmex. Now I switched to some super, super some market um, own brand. It's Candida. <laughs> I don't okay. want to do commercials for toothpaste. Right, 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 right. But but you see, I mean, I want to know: does it affect your does it affect your your uh, decision on what toothpaste you use, right? Based on your spending time and teeth, right? Um, do you yeah. brush your teeth? Yes. Yeah. Of yes. Course. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you brush it? How many times a day do you brush your teeth? I brush it twi twice a day. Would you like? Do you? Would it theoretically be better to brush it more? You think? Of course, three times. Of course, three. three. Really? Okay. So here you're hearing it from the expert, right? Okay. Right. Does that lead to more bone growth? No, probably has nothing to do with it, right? I don't know, actually. Yeah, it's probably just cleaning, right? Unless there are some bacteria that break down bone, right? So, so, but, but generally, okay. Um, do you grind your teeth? Uh, 
when I have a lot of stress, I, I don't grind them, but I crunch on them. Okay, so that uh, and, and that's not good, right? That's not good. So uh, this not... this this invention would help yourself, right? You know, you'd be also available to benefit. I mean, you're still very young, right? In your early 30s, so you know you still have so many years. But over time, if you keep doing that, right? We know that um, you, the teeth have to last another 66 years, right? So then, what happens, right? And as you get there, we don't know, right? But that that invention will be very very good, and also. Um, okay, so now, now, now you're these two years. How has it been for you during these two years? That 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 was basically um, that was like Alice in Wonderland, you know. So I was in this research group before alone, you know, the lonesome guy who was doing bones. And then you enter the lab of bone biomechanics, and everyone is doing something with bone imaging or bone tissue engineering or animal work with bones and then everything gets super exciting and you get mm. basic feedback from everyone it was that was for me it was was a big i, I mean it was a game changer right i would not have finished my phd but I would have switched. and it got let's say i got much more feedback i i went after the first year i thought i progressed as much in one year like i did two and a half or three years before that because it was just much fa everything was much straight more straight i mean i was basically Wait, just but yeah like, two years ago you finished your phd but are you now under are you a postdoc so now i'm basically a postdoc so i started first of june still in the same lab as a postdoc and first of june of this year yes this year yes. what happened between um the phd completing and uh and the no, june no, first that's these two years I spend in the new group to complete the PhD. Basically. Okay, so so okay, so you you okay, so all right, I see. So and then and then so you just you just completed your PhD in 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 June or yes. May. Okay, May, and May, okay, May twentieth, and then you immediately switch to the postdoc. So now you're doing this, and then and then what makes it interesting now is um, is why are you um, going for funding? So now, now I'm going to, for funding because now I basically want to do a startup, right? This, so this now we're, wait, you didn't want industry, right? But you're now going to do a startup, which is yes. different from industry because industry oftentimes you've got companies dying. And now you want to, you think you have the fire to create this, right? And form a company, right? The name yes. of your company is what? The, the name of the company is Compagos. So the Compag, Compag. Is, it's a Latin, it's a Latin workplace. So Compact Go or Compago, it means platform and OS means bone. So it's a bone platform, what we're doing. It's a bone platform, right? Yes. And, 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 you know, for full disclosure, you asked me to be involved, right? And I said that, you know, we don't really know each other, you know, very much, but I'm interested. Um, it was actually a referral from Williamson at Harvard. And why am I interested? Because I, my teeth are breaking down too, right? So yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah, right? I just broke yeah. four last week yeah. on, on a bike. So <laughs> I'm interested in doing this. So now I'm going to be pulled into a group in Switzerland with a postdoc that I interview, and I want everybody who's I open up my life, and I told them that they you need to let more people know who you are, right? Because if John is doing this, right, really incredible breakthrough that could change our lives. And how much funding do you need in Campagos? So, I mean, now what I did is I, I applied with my friend Robert Baumann. He's currently in Canada for an ETH Pinyu Fellowship. That will give us funding for um, one year. And then I have, with, for my postdoc, I have funding until next year for my professor. So I'm applying for postdoc funding. But then what I need actually to basically have a few other people, and I, I want to have at least, let's say, for, for one or two additional employees for the moment. I don't need more, but I would say like 150 to 300,000. Um, Swiss francs would allow me to, to employ Robert for a longer time and get an, another additional other person on board that, that, that I have. I have a pool of 14 people that are interested in a WhatsApp group. Um, and some of them could join earlier. Some maybe want to join later when they see it's working. Um, but yeah, we're also applying to, yeah, I mean, in a, soon in a couple of weeks, we have from Johnson & Johnson, they have a call for 250000 in the U.S. for a program. We will submit Compagos there. So it's, it's not big funding, it's, it's basically 
30 well, from... Yeah. Uh, we have three minutes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this, right? Is that when you go into funding, there are fundings where you get funded to explore, okay, to explore new topics and to build out this platform. And there's also funding where you as a company are willing to become exploited, exploited by bigger companies that need work to be done. So rather than you doing one postdoc, it's like you have this platform to service as here's our postdoc team a team of scientists and thinkers and then you'll give us funding and then out of after we we pay everybody we have this much left um then because we're more efficient we can take what's left and apply it into our exploration mode so selling your time to be exploited so that you can ultimately keep moving compagos further for the mission of compagos right but yes, then you yes. can also go for funding where People just say, you know, this is so good. As long as I get to have some of this compound, um, here, here's a hundred thousand francs, right? Save my spot, right? <laughs> so sell the spot, right? I, you know, there's so many things that you haven't, we haven't talked about. Like John, do you have a family yet? You have a wife? You have a girlfriend? No, no. I don't. I I don't have a family or a wife that yeah. right but you see what happens when you have a family you can then teach your children to continue based on where you know you can extrapolate the past but we don't know the future how do we know you're going to make it at the very end how don't how do we not know that John's children right you know, should shouldn't be schooled and trained in that area so that we can continue this we don't know anything but we do know that that you are very special one thing is we know I know, and I'm willing to put my reputation on it, is that you are very, very special. And it, 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 you have put a lot of math, a lot of science, a lot of um, thinking into this field from mul multiple fields, and you're integrating these things, and the world needs you. Society needs you, and you're just still very, very young on there. And I, I am 100% I'm willing to help individuals like yourself because why not right why not explore this possibility this is this is like this is not even what i like about this more than the heart right is that the heart you have to actually go in and do a lot of surgeries we don't know the outcomes this we would know the outcome fairly quickly and i like quick outcome type research because look if it works and it holds right then all these dentists out there could actually apply it. and then it's not just the mouth you can actually apply it to the rest of the body and osteoporosis as well as other areas could utilize um, a platform like this where the information is interfolded. Do you have more derivatives of compound X or is it just compound X one or is it compound X with many possibilities? So what, what we have is basically we have this, this one compound with these, with these nanoparticles. We have a mixture mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we have signs showing that this material is better than, than yeah. hydroxyapatite or calcium phosphate, whatever is out there. Then um, your our common friend, Pedro, you also talked to him. He yes. has all the one compound that um, basically you want to use this, this bone organ technology platform to develop and test it. And then this this platform, that's why I, it's called Compagos. So basically we have this, these two compounds that could go into patients, right, to heal fractures, or to, to help the, the jaw grow after an operation for the tooth to find some anchorage. But then this bone technology platform goes actually a bit further. So what, what we want to do is we want to also help other people that maybe do um, implants, be it med tech, for example, they have maybe screws. They, what they do is when they have to, when they develop a new product, that it's a lengthy and, and a process with a lot of uncertainty and a high risk because you go first into animal models. If you do a new pharmaceuticals, you go maybe mouse models, you test them if they're working. Then you go into phase one, you test on healthy humans. You still don't know if it's going to work on a patient actually. Then you go into phase two, phase three, you test on patients. And then you will figure out maybe this compound will work or it will not work. And the same if you, if you want to, for example, do implants, you have to go into sheep model. One sheep for a short study is 8,000 Swiss francs. And then it's difficult to scale, right? So right. compounds and materials, it's always about scalable product production of basically the precursor. This was the nanoparticles we can do, it's scalable. You can do tons per hours. But then the problem is if you want to go into clinical 
basically studies, it's scalable testing. And scalable testing on, on humans it is it's difficult. So what we want to offer is basically some kind of bone organoid technology platform. If maybe in 15 years or in, in 20 years, um, we have some other projects with smaller steps, but the big step would be if maybe in, in 15 years you have someone that has a rare bone disease or has any bone disease, you will run on this platform a clinical study just for this patient. You will create 100 organoids, bone organoids, and then you test five, or six different pounds, different concentrations. Right. And then you stop, stop. Or- so, so right here, we're at the end of our time, right? Imagine if you were talking to a politician, right? The, uh, the Williamson connected me to Peter, connected me to you, you right? And, and Peter mentioned that his funding got cut in Brazil because of the you know COVID. Mm-hmm. So if you start talking with a with a with a like I could follow you, but my audience, right? You know, yes, they're looking yeah, at this and much. saying, like, "Wow, you know." So so right. So and of course, I I want my audience to grow. Um, to be able to understand this, but what we want to make is we want to keep it within the hour, and I want to say if we lose John, John could do anything, right? You can actually go make pizza, right? Yeah. If you go make pizza, you will lose the skill set, right? Because you know you are only able to maintain this skill set because you kept going, right? You went out there and explored and traveled the world and found out that nobody else is doing this, right? Uh, most people are just living their lives; they don't even know about this stuff. How many people in the world, right, with this blown platform would be able to do is to put them all together to understand the possibilities we could do from bone all over and then form partnerships with companies and other things. So this is why I commit, I, I announced this, I'm committing the rest of my life, for however long I have, to help individuals like yourself, to identify them first of all. Um, I'm not, I may not be able to finish uh, at the very end to take you all the way to the end, but I've traveled some and I've experienced all kinds of Corporations and growth and I'm, I'm at the Harvard Business Analytics side looking at the data sets and that's why we have our connection But I I've committed to helping individuals and I, I can say this is If you if you really want to hear everything you can play this over and over again until you understand every word or you can just believe that there are certain individuals in this world that are born to be and have the have the have maintained their interest in a certain area that offer a solution set to solving some major problems without the proper funding without the proper understanding of what they're even saying we lose it completely and then we just spin our circles and i guarantee you this is not a sine or cosine wave the world is getting sicker there are there are greater issues that we are dealing with and human beings need to have these breakthrough discoveries because that that is the light at the end of the tunnel so i'm very happy that we met i'm going to end it here right um okay. so that so that it doesn't go because i this could go on for for like weeks i could talk oh, with yeah, you yeah. you could talk with me and we could go through this but we want to keep it here so i can launch it right and I want people to see what it is I do every day, right? And what I'm coming into, right? And, and how do we get you closer to, um, to, to, I don't want to call it success, but closer to not losing that spark and turning that spark into a flame and a, a flame into a bonfire that can continue to take that heat like you were describing in the beginning and then turn into energy. The energy of transformation the energy of healing, the energy of making a difference, as opposed, I, I, because that's why I don't want to call it success. Because what does that mean, right? Yeah. You know, so I mean, if, yeah, right. If you say, if you say very simple. If you look at the fire, right, as, yeah. as a scientist, fire it needs three sources. You need you need yeah. basically fuel, oxygen, and then you need a spark, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm bringing basically the, the spark. The spark. I think yes. that, and then you know, fuel or oxygen that you, you can. Yeah, if you can make the fuel infrastructure, I'm a DTH, I have maybe fuel, oxygen, maybe it's connection network with people for some funding. So, yeah, I mean, they... But how do you say this to a Wall Street guy? How do you say this to the common public, right? How do you how do you speak to the crowd, right? This is the type of thing that, um, because there are, there are 7.8 billion people in the world. If everybody gave you one penny, right you'd be fine 
They don't know about you, right? They don't know. They don't even know that this exists. This is a possibility. You mean to tell me there's a possibility that I could I could solve my teeth problem, not solve my grinding teeth problem, is keep grinding. This could solve your problem, make it last 10 years, 20 years longer, and you can reapply. I mean, this is possible. It's not impossible. It's certainly within the realm of possibilities. But how do we do it? We need to keep you alive. You are John Connor, like in Terminator, John Connor. If we don't protect you, we have a different outcome, right? That's what it is, right? So I'm, I'm very honored that, um, that this whole thing happened. And, um, and, and we're, we'll, we'll, we'll check in. We'll, we'll announce to the world later. I mean, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes things that have to happen. But I'm happy to, uh, to be on board. And, uh, and I'm in your WhatsApp group and all that. This is wonderful. This has been a great exchange. Thank you for uh, coming on here today. Thanks. Thanks for the interview, Gordon. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.